Welcome back. It's January 9th, about 1.30 in the afternoon on Saturday. We're going to do a quick video on the progress of the gasifier. Uh, a lot of things have changed since I've done my last video and I haven't really posted a whole lot about it, but I'm going to start off with a quick tour here. We're going to go over some things as we go along. So you guys have seen this uh, air intake gauge. It's, it shows the flow of air into the system in uh, CFM. And with no fuel in the system, it the air flows pretty freely. And I could read 25 to 27 CFM of air flowing through the system pretty easily. The problem is once you load it up with fuel, especially wood pellets being small, um, the space between the wood pellets adds a lot of resistance to the air coming in. So um, what I've done is I've picked up this other gauge here. And this one is in... CFH so it's 20 to 100 CFH so with any luck we'll be able to monitor how much gas is, is being made here so that's the first part okay so the air comes in through here goes down here in through the bottom of the radiator doesn't actually uh, exchange any air with the gas in the radiator but it comes out the bottom here travels up and goes through the radiator again. Now these aluminum pipes are just heat exchangers. That's all they're doing is trying to soak some of the heat out of the outgoing gas. Okay, so uh, we're picking up our air intake temperature. Comes out the radiator on this side. I've just got a gauge here to show what the temperature of the, of the air going in is. And then it goes right into the hearth. So I will open this up. Bear with me, it's hard to do this one-handed. So, uh, the air comes in through here, goes down into the hearth. But one thing I did want to point out that you can see right there is the thermocouple sticking inside here. So that's going to read the temperature in the hearth. Hopefully you can see that good enough. So goes into the fire there, creates the gas in an oxygen restricted environment because it runs out at that point. The gas travels out of the top of the barrel here into this radiator. So this radiator is has four vertical pipes here. The gas loses heat traveling down these four vertical pipes. Again they join back together on that horizontal pipe at the bottom of the radiator and go right into the bottom of this expansion tank come out of the top of the expansion tank down into the first capture jar and then the tees off there comes this way runs this whole length up this pipe back again okay so this vertical white pipe right here at this point right now it's just to pass the gas into the filters which you can see are also completed and loaded and ready to go. But this pipe is going to be replaced with a series of other pipes uh, and I'll probably have a valve on it that I could uh, do an unfiltered flare. I could tap off of this pipe right here and do an unfiltered flare which at this point I can't do because I want to use a separate blower for my unfiltered flare. So for right now know that that's to come in the future and this check valve is uh, prevents any air from being pulled out of the filters or gas from being pulled out of the filters when I will be doing that unfiltered flare. So it has to be pulled from the system there. All right, so it goes into the first filter here, and you can see that my filters are done, and I've got condensation traps in the bottom of all three of them and valves that I can empty them out easily. So the gas will come into the first filter. This filter is filled with uh, the stainless pot scrubbers. These are them right here. They're from Walmart. Just a couple of weeks I picked up. So it comes out the top of the first filter. Goes down into the second filter. And these, the second filter is filled with wood chips. Now, I didn't really want to buy smoking wood chips, but... I didn't have any wood chips available, so that's what I ended up just getting, just for now. 
So it comes out of the top of the second filter, goes into the bottom of the third filter. The third filter is filled with this polyester fiber material. It's probably from like 1950 somewhere. Joanne Fabrics, I don't even know if they're still around. But anyway, comes across this pipe here and it comes down. Now I will have a uh, paper filter in this too, which I also don't have done at this point. So I do have an RTD right here. That's my final gas temperature RTD. And I also have a uh, quarter inch air line going into that. That goes to one of my negative air pressure sensors. So I've got two negative air pressure sensors here that show my, my uh, air pressures, my vacuum levels before and after the filters. So as you can see, it gets a little interesting right here. This is the inlet, this is the inlet to the blower. And uh, if I want to run just the blower, the check valve right here prevents any air from being pulled in, in this direction. So th the gas has to come down here, travel in through the blower, through the output of the blower to where I would either, either hook up my, uh, my flare or I would hook up my hose to the generator, which is also a couple things I have to do on that part there. But uh, another reason why I haven't run to this point is because I would like to build a cyclone filter before the generator. So I also don't have that done. So there's a few things that I got to button up before I will do a run. Um, I don't want to rush things. So I'm just, I feel like I, you know, it's been six months or so since I've done my last run. And I want to uh, get to a certain point before I can, uh, you know, before I feel like doing a run is, 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 a good idea. So anyway, we're going to move on. We've got the VFD to power that three phase blower that I just showed you. That is hooked up. There is a cord that right now is just plugged into the wall outlet. It's 240 volts, single phase AC. So it takes that 240 volts, turns it into three phase power, and I can set the frequency that I want to run that motor at. Now, right now, I have this frequency set at 30 uh, hertz, and the reason I have it set, it can run up to 60 hertz. Actually, it could probably run a little higher than that, but, you know, full power is 60 hertz, and if I run it at 60 hertz, it'll actually pull these rubber couplings closed. So, this thing's got some serious power, but obviously, I have enough vacuum to get the job done here, but so I could run that, that char pretty tight and not have to worry too much about it. So this is a really nice setup. I've also got most of my wiring done. All my RTDs are wired in. Uh, my, my analog input card is wired in, so it, it actually takes the data from these negative air pressure sensors and, and will display it on the screen here. Um, I got my thermocouple wired in. That's displaying data. Right now, um, I'm still in the infancy stage with this programming end of things. Uh, I do have it figured out to the point where I can actually view the data on the screen right here. So you can see off to the right there, it says expansion tank temperature, barrel temperature, ambient air temperature. Uh, my ambient air temperature sensor is right here. It's going to be a little hard to see, but I will. what I will actually do is I'll put my hand on it just so you see where it's at, so I can show you where I'm reaching. I'll put my hand on it and you can watch the screen here and see the temperature change. Sixty-eight, sixty-nine, seventy. So you can see as I keep my hand on it, the temperature's going up. So that's just, I mean, the probe is just out to the ambient air. So, so you know, it was kind of cold in here. So things are kind of looking a little all over the place on that gauge right now, only because, you know, I have heat on in the side here. So, so as the probes that are internal to the system are kind of insulated from the warmer air on the outside here until everything would sort of warm up. But so you guys can see that I have, you know, all of these things will be able to be monitored during the next run. So that's kind of a positive thing. Now the, uh, the negative air pressure sensor is still kind of screwy. It's showing like 3,000 plus value to it. Um, normally that would concern me, but I do have my gauges right here that'll tell me what they actually are. So 
I'm not too worried about that. So, so what I'll do right now is I will fire up the blower. So all I got to do is press this button. Now it's running at 30 hertz. Like I said, it's half power. And like I said before, oh, I don't have my hopper pulled closed. So it's not going to show an accurate reading. Bear with me as I close this. So right now you'll see about 17, 18. Now as you add fuel to this system, that number is going to drop down to the point where you're not even going to be able to to read it on that gauge, and that's why I got the second one. So, uh, as of right now, I still have my, my battery in here hooked up to the aspirate shaker. I do have a second one of those power supplies. I'm not sure if it'll handle the load of the battery of the, of the motor for the aspirate shaker. I haven't tried that out yet. There's a lot of little things to do, but the big hitters are the, uh, let me put this off. The big hitters are, uh, the cyclone filter, the second blower for my uh, lighting of my unfiltered flare. Um, and I will give you a shot of this too. I do have my generator pretty much ready to go. So if I want to run it on gas, it's pretty much set up to run on gas right now. This uh, air filter assembly, this air cleaner, used to be mounted right on the uh, on the carburetor, like there's the old carburetor. So I made an adapter that bolts to the original pattern of the carburetor so I can mount the air. So if I want to run it on gas, I leave the air wide open and I shut off the valve to the wood gas. And when I want to run it on wood gas, I'll open up this valve all the way and I'll close this one off a portion of the way so I'm regulating how much actually gets pulled into the system. So. You can kind of see these these fittings here are just they come off pretty easy. So with any luck, that'll work out okay. So uh, that's about all of the progress that I could think of. If you guys have seen anything on here that I didn't talk about, you know, feel free to ask any questions. And uh, you know, I'm going to try to keep keep going with the progress here. When it's warmer out, I'll try to get out here and. Get a little bit of work done, and hopefully sometime in the very soon near future, I will be doing a run, running that generator. Uh, one more thing I will point out while we're here, is I've got this uh, basically like a 10 foot long electric heater that I'll be using for, you know, like a load on the system here. So this generator is rated for 5,000 watts. Of course, I don't expect to see that much from it, but... Um, We'll see what it'll do when I get that far. So thanks for checking in, and I'll keep you guys posted when we get to the next step.